Henry was born in Pembroke Castle, that stands on the bank of the River Caldow, in West Wales, on January 28, 1457. Henry's father was Edmund Tudor, the first Earl of Richmond, and his mother was Margaret Beaufort. His father died three months before his birth, and his mother was a mere child at 13 years of age. Henry would be their only child. He married Elizabeth of York on January 18, 1486. Both Henry and Elizabeth were great-great-grandchildren of John of Gaunt, being third cousins. Their union would give their children a strong claim to the throne, it also unified the houses of York and Lancaster. The Tudor Rose symbolizes the joining of these two great houses, by combining the Red Rose of Lancaster and the White Rose of York. Together they had seven children, Arthur, Prince of Wales, first husband of Catherine of Aragon, Margaret, Queen of Scots, Henry VIII of England, Elizabeth Tudor, Mary, Queen of France, Edmund Tudor, Duke of Somerset, and Catherine Tudor. By all accounts their marriage was a very happy one. Henry appeared quite heartbroken upon Elizabeth's death, after the birth of their last child, who sadly also died. Henry's education as a noble would have been of the very highest quality. Taught to read and write, he would also have been taught horsemanship and how to fight. Which would ultimately prove his making, as his battle to attain the throne would be won by defeating Richard III, at the Battle of Bosworth Field. Henry VII would become king on August 22, 1486, after he won the battle with Richard III at Bosworth Field. He subsequently cemented his claim to the throne by wedding Elizabeth of York. In order to secure his future, and that of his issue, Henry had Parliament repealed Titulus Regis, thus undoing the invalidity of Elizabeth of York's parents, Edward IV, and Elizabeth Woodville's marriage. This in itself meant Elizabeth of York was once again legitimate, and in her own right, entitled to be considered in line for the throne. Henry's next step was to retroactively have himself pronounced king from August the 21st, before the Battle of Bosworth Field, meaning anyone who had fought against him could, and would, be guilty of treason, leaving Henry legally within his rights to confiscate their lands and properties, and those of Richard III, and therefore restoring his own lands and property. Henry VII will go down in history as being the king that founded the Tudor dynasty. He ruled a peaceful realm by implementing political and monetary initiatives that saw the country grow, keeping nobles under control, reducing, by stealthy taxes, the abilities to keep private armies, and implementing legal proceedings across the lands. It would appear, in Henry's latter years, that the stability his strategy had brought to the country early on was being abused, but when the time came, and the power shifted from father to son, these overzealous activities were curtailed. Henry's eldest son Arthur, heir apparent, but after his marriage to Catherine of Aragon, and whilst on a visit to Ludlow Castle, he unexpectedly died, leaving a very distraught father and mother. Within the year, Henry's wife, Elizabeth of York, would also die shortly after childbirth, together with the child. Henry was thus thrice bereaved, for his eldest son, his wife, and baby daughter. Nevertheless, he did consider marrying again largely to try and maintain the Spanish stability, and later when he decided against a marriage to Catherine of Aragon, deciding his son Henry should marry her, he took a small interest in the Queen of Naples, who had also recently been widowed. Again, this came to nothing, and at Richmond Palace, on April 21, 1509, King Henry VII succumbed to tuberculosis. His body was laid to rest alongside that of his beloved wife, Elizabeth at Westminster Abbey.